Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor Jim Bytel. Today's topic of discussion is the AC current divider rule. Our objective is to learn to apply the AC current divider rule to quickly and directly solve for current through an individual element in a parallel combination of two elements. Bottom line up front, the AC current divider rule is the DC current divider rule using phasers. I cannot make it much simpler than that. This lecture therefore operates under the presumption the viewer is intimately familiar with a DC current divider rule from way back in the Basic Electronics 1 DC Circuit Analysis playlist, available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched this lecture yet, or only dimly recall its contents, please take the time to do so now. Additionally, it is presumed the viewer has an understanding of basic parallel AC circuit properties. In our previous lecture on parallel AC circuits, we learned that voltage across elements in parallel is the same, and the sum of currents entering a node equals the sum of currents leaving a node. These are the most fundamental properties of parallel AC circuits. If you recall, the DC current divider rule was a simple proportionality equation that allowed a user to quickly and directly solve for current through an element of interest without having to solve for total impedance and voltage values, likewise for the AC current divider rule. As was the case for the DC current divider rule, the AC current divider rule is a special purpose tool designed for use in limited environments, those environments being occasions in which incoming current is known for a parallel combination of two known elements. To avoid confusion, note the means of differentiating the two impedances. One impedance is the impedance of interest, Z1. The other impedance is the impedance not of interest, Z0. The AC current divider rule states that current through an element of interest, I1, is equal to the impedance of the element not of interest, Z0, divided by the summation of two impedances, Z1 plus Z0, times the incoming current, I in. Note that the ratio Z0 over Z1 plus Z0 must be calculated first, and then this result in proportion is multiplied by incoming current. Additionally, note Z1 plus Z0 appears entirely below the division operator. As an illustrated example of the AC current divider rule, consider the following parallel AC circuit comprised of two elements. The first element is a 250 ohm resistor, and the second element is a 7 microfarad capacitor. We know incoming current to be 115 milliampers at an angle of zero. Additionally, we know the excitation frequency to be 60 Hz. Let's say we're being asked to solve for the current through each element. Note we are not being asked to solve for voltage, nor are we being asked to solve for total impedance. Educational and entertaining as these properties may be, they are merely diversions delaying us from reaching our desired goals. Let's see if we can use the AC current divider rule to quickly and directly solve for current through each element. The complex impedance of the 250 ohm resistor would be 250 ohms at an angle of zero degrees. Let's call this impedance Z1. The complex impedance of the 7 microfarad capacitor at an excitation frequency of 60 Hz would be approximately 378.9 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. Let's call this impedance Z2. The AC current divider rule set up to solve for I1 suggests that I1 equals Z2 divided by Z1 plus Z2 times incoming current I in. Substituting our given values yields I1 to be 96 milliampers at an angle of negative 33.4 degrees. Similarly, the AC current divider rule set up to solve for I2 suggests that I2 equals Z1 divided by Z1 plus Z2 times incoming current I in. Substituting our given values yields I2 to be 63.3 milliampers at an angle of 56.6 degrees. You know only the numerator changes for these different permutations of the AC current divider rule. When solving for I1, Z2 is the impedance not of interest. Whereas when solving for I2, Z1 is the impedance not of interest. There you have it. Two quick applications of the AC current divider rule directly yielded our desired results without any delay, toil, or tears. Given we saved so much time using the AC current divider rule, we've got ample opportunities to check our work. There's two principal means of doing so, one via Kirchhoff's current law and the other via Ohm's law. A Kirchhoff's current law analysis of this parallel circuit suggests that I in equals I1 plus I2. The sum of currents entering a node equals the sum of currents leaving a node. What goes in must come out. Given we solve for current through individual elements using the AC current divider rule, we can substitute the results of one of our calculations to verify our second value. Let's do so for I2. An algebraic rearrangement of the Kirchhoff's current law equation for this parallel circuit solving for I2 suggests that I in minus I1 equals I2. Substituting in the given value for incoming current and the calculated value for I1 using the AC current divider rule yields I2 to be 63.3 milliampers at an angle of 56.6 degrees, confirming our earlier calculation. Additionally, one can use Ohm's law to verify the results obtained using the AC current divider rule. Because these two elements are in parallel with one another, they should experience the same voltage differential. 
Ohm's law solving for voltage demonstrates impedance Z1 experiences a differential of 24 volts at an angle of negative 33.4 degrees. Similarly, Ohm's law solving for voltage demonstrates impedance Z2 experiences a differential of 24 volts at an angle of negative 33.4 degrees. Voltage across this parallel circuit is indeed the same. All right, let's try an illustrated example of the AC current divider rule, this time featuring a parallel combination of two different elements. In effort to make this lecture compact, note I've already taken the liberty of calculating the impedance for each element. Z1 is a resistor with an impedance of 180 ohms at an angle of 0 degrees. Z2 is a non-ideal inductor with an impedance of 158.3 ohms at an angle of 82.7 degrees. Incoming current is known to be 2 amps at an angle of 0 degrees. Let's say we're being asked to solve for current through each element using only the AC current divider rule. Again, note we are not being asked to solve for voltage, nor are we being asked to solve for total impedance. Our only mission is to solve for current through each individual element as quickly and directly as possible using only the AC current divider rule. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. The AC current divider rule set up to solve for I1 suggests that I1 equals Z2 divided by Z1 plus Z2 times incoming current I in. Substituting in our given values yields I1 to be 1.2 amps at an angle of 44.6 degrees. Similarly, the AC current divider rule set up to solve for I2 suggests that I2 equals Z1 divided by Z1 plus Z2 times incoming current I in. Substituting in our given values yields I2 to be 1.4 amps at an angle of negative 38.1 degrees. Because the setup of the AC current divider rule is somewhat counterintuitive, I found it helps to perform a quick sanity check. Note the impedance path with the smallest magnitude, Z2 in this case, draws the larger amount of current. Conversely, note the impedance path with a larger magnitude, in this case Z1, draws the smallest amount of current. It makes sense. As a means of numerically checking our work and Ohm's law manipulation for either one of the current values obtained using the AC current divider rule and solving for voltage across this parallel combination, yields 224.2 volts at an angle of 44.6 degrees, thus confirming the most fundamental property of parallel AC circuits. Notably, voltage across elements in parallel is the same. If you're looking for more illustrated examples of the AC current divider rule, fear not. I'm going to publish another supplemental lecture entirely dedicated to illustrated examples of parallel AC circuit analysis. During this upcoming lecture, you'll find ample opportunities to practice the AC current divider rule. Additionally, the AC current divider rule will be employed during the analysis of more complex series parallel circuits. In conclusion, we learned to quickly and directly calculate the current through an individual element in a parallel configuration of two known elements without the necessity of solving for total impedance nor voltage using the AC current divider rule. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your Lazy Lab partner about this resource. Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.